fiberglass is certainly a versatile material. Because it's light and indestructible, new and specialized uses are being found for it, from baths to boats to motor car bodies. Using a mold, some glass cloth, a pot of resin and an old paintbrush, any variety of shapes can be formed. In this Dunedin workshop, it's shop window mannequins. Replacing the easily chipped plaster of Paris, fiberglass is the ideal medium. It's easily handled and gives a perfect surface. When her arms are on, she'll be made up of 19 parts. Molds for some of the models are imported, others are made on the premises. With a couple of squirts, on goes the skin. her personality develops, stately, aloof, but very charming. A small matter of a suitable wig and another buyer is satisfied. So she goes out into the world, wearing of course nothing but the latest and nothing but the best. between Ray's Junction and Gore along the Pomahockey River is the attractive farming area known as West Otago. It's a countryside of mixed farming with sheep on the hills and crops in the valleys. Growing wheat, oats and winter feed, local farmers have been experts on cropping since the days of horse-drawn plants. Today at Tapanui there's a rally of vintage farm machinery, some of it drawn by real horsepower. Teams like this are now a rarity. In the program are demonstrations of old-time farming methods, back to the time when all crops had to be cut and gathered by hand. In those not-so-far-off days, harvesting was a long and back-breaking job. The sheaves are stooped to dry. This is quite an art, for the stooks have to stand up to wind and weather. Then about the 1890s came the reaper and binder, which was drawn by horses. It revolutionized harvesting, making large-scale cropping possible. It not only cut the crop, but tied the sheaves at the same time. Important in the development of farm mechanization was the steam engine for threshing. Portable engines were the forerunners of the traction engine, which towed its own threshing mill. Finally came the tractors, and the West Otago farmers have collected and restored several of these history-making beauties in the same way as some people collect vintage cars. A 1923 Austin, which cost £340, is followed by a 1921 Mola. The Hart Pa, pulling the portable steam engine, is of 1928 vintage and has two cylinders. In all, 34 old-time tractors have turned out for the West Otago Vintage Club's second successful rally. Keeping the Canberras of New Zealand's 14 Squadron ready for action is the job of RNZAF Engineering Services. Every 600 flying hours, the Rolls-Royce engines are taken down and tested. At Woodburn Blenheim, airmen in the new jet workshops dismantle all the parts, check and reassemble them to new specifications. Overseas, specialist firms would overhaul many components, but the versatile New Zealanders have been trained to do it all themselves, from A to Z. The 
completed job goes to a test bed, for one failure could possibly lose a crew and a quarter million pound aeroplane. New Zealand's biggest silencer quietens the exhaust gases, for the engine develops the equivalent of 12,000 horsepower. One whole wall opens for air intake. Without it, the roof could be sucked in. Kerosene at 800 gallons an hour will heat the air to 1,000 degrees centigrade. <coughs> with hot air screaming through the turbine faster than sound, the engine will be pushed away with a three-ton thrust. To complete the installation, the engine's loaded with an explosive cartridge for a 100 horsepower start. All set. Everyone from mechanic to the station CO feels the tension. Well, Sergeant, how's it going? Very ready? All set, sir. Cartridge in and ready for the pre-start check. <laughs> Cell ventilator on. on, cubicle ventilator on, on. anti-icing open. open, master start on, on. igniter both. both, fuel pump on, on. ram bleed off. off, air intake tamp on, on. instruments on. on, JPT number one, number one. throttle closed. 